I'll start at the beginning of how I became a writer. Um, I was born a poor black child. <laughs> I remember the days sitting on my porch with my family, singing and a dancing <laughs> down in Mississippi. Or maybe that was someone else. I was raised uh, in Manhattan. I was a bit of a shut-in. I would have preferred to have been a sickly child, but it didn't work out that way. I always like it when you read a biography of James Joyce or whatever, and it says, he was born a sickly child and forced to retreat into a world of imagination. It sounds so wonderful. Um, instead, I just didn't like going outside. <laughs> Other kids left their houses and did sports, played in the great outdoors. I like to stay inside watching The Twilight Zone and The Outer Limits. Um, I read a lot of comics and science fiction, and I adored Stephen King. Writing Spider-Man or the X-Men when I was in junior high seemed like the perfect job. Um, if you're a writer, you could work from home, you didn't have to talk to people or wear clothes, and you could just make up stuff all day. So until I got to college and started reading more uh, different kinds of contemporary fiction, I wanted to write The Black Shining or The Black Salem's Lot. Basically, if you took a Stephen King title and put the black in front of it, that's what I wanted to do. Um, eventually, freshman year, I started reading The Modernists, uh, different so-called highbrow stuff. And I liked the equivalency I saw between science fiction and horror and magic realism in Garcia Marquez, uh, the absurdity of Beckett, the mythical landscapes of Borges. They played with the fantastic as much as any genre writer. And I think it helped that from my first exposure to Beckett, I took him to be a form of high realism. A guy is buried up to his neck in sand and can't move. He has an itch on his leg he can't scratch. That sounds like Monday morning to me. Um, I considered myself a writer, but I didn't actually write anything. I wore black and smoked cigarettes. Um, but I didn't actually sit down and write, which apparently is part of the process uh, of writing. <laughs> Finally, I wrote two short stories, uh, two five-page epics that I used to audition for the creative writing classes. Um, and both times I was turned down, which is good training. Um, I think probably even more than a workshop, because everyone hates you when you, write, when you write. No one wants to read your stuff. And as soon as you learn that and take it in and move on, uh, I think uh, the better it is it'll be for your career as a writer. Fortunately, I lucked out, lucked out as a job, lucked out, and got a job at Village Voice uh, right out of college. Um, some of you know about the Village Voice, Alternative Weekly in New York. Um, the main thing you have to know is that uh, whenever you were there at the Village Voice was its heyday, and when you left, it went downhill. <laughs> so if you were there in the 50s, hanging out with Norman Mailer, writing about beatniks, uh, it was great. You had your finger on the pulse of the culture, and when you left, it went downhill. If you're there in the 70s, writing about the birth of punk and disco, um, it was great, and then you moved on, and it's too bad what happened to the paper. I was there from 91 to 96, and we put out a great product. Uh, it's too bad what happened after I left. Um, <laughs> but it's there I learned how to be a writer. Uh, I had to open the 40 books a day we got from publishers. I worked in the book section. And I got to see how capricious uh, the reviewing industry was. But the good thing about being at the paper, especially a paper like The Voice, which is a writer's paper, was that you could hit up people for assignments and eventually uh, get your name in there. So after six months, I felt confident enough to approach the TV editor. He seemed like an easy mark. And he gave my, my first assignment, which was about the season, finality, the season finales of the shows, Growing Pains and Who's the Boss. Um, I guess no one else wanted to do them. Uh, 20 years later, I think they, they stand up as the definitive think pieces about those two sitcoms. So I'm quite proud of them. And that led to writing book reviews and film reviews. And eventually, I, I felt confident enough to start writing fiction.